Okay, so now that we're comfortable with what it means for goods to be rivalrous and non-rivalrous and excludable and non-excludable, now we're going to put different categories of goods on this chart. Okay, so first we're going to have the goods that are rivalrous and excludable. So we call these pure private goods. Okay, so pure private goods, excludable and rivalrous. So like food, right? If I eat that taco, no one else can eat that taco. And we're always talking about the exact good itself in, in all of these conversations. So, um, right, so if I buy a computer, no one else can buy that computer. If I buy a house, no one else can buy that house. Okay. Um, and uh, so they're uh, rivalrous, okay? But they're also excludable, right? You don't get a house if you don't pay for a house, right? You don't get a computer if you don't pay for a computer. You don't get food if you don't pay for food, okay? Um, again, this is almost every good that you encounter is rivalrous and excludable, right? You using it affects someone else is using it and someone had to pay to get it. Okay? So these are the pure private goods, rivalrous and excludable. Okay. So pure private goods, rivalrous and excludable. Okay, next is the non-rivalrous but excludable. These are the toll goods or club goods. So excludable, non-rivalrous. Okay. So your toll goods or club goods uh, would be things like a Netflix subscription. So it's excludable because you have to pay to get a Netflix subscription, but it's non-rivalrous because you having a Netflix subscription doesn't limit the ability of other people to also get a Netflix subscription, right? So as many people as Netflix servers can reasonably hold can get a subscription, no problem, right? It's not like they'll say, oh, sorry, we've already sold a million subscriptions. We're not gonna sell you a subscription. It's, it's no problem for them, okay? Um, a toll road will also be an example. So you have to pay to get on the toll road, so it's excludable. And because most people want to avoid paying, they don't take the toll road. So there's almost never traffic, so it feels non-rivalrous. Right? You being there doesn't affect the ability of people to also drive however fast they want to drive. Okay? Um, YouTube premium, right? You have to pay to get it. And you having a subscription doesn't affect someone else's ability to also get a subscription. A private pool, right? Again, you have to pay to get in or someone had to pay to get in. And uh, it's not crowded because you have to pay. And so it doesn't feel rivalrous. So you being in that pool doesn't really affect other people's ability to also be in that pool. And then Wi-Fi with a password, right? You had to pay to get it. And uh, lots of people can have Wi-Fi without really affecting the others. Okay. Um, and then we have the rivalrous non-excludable goods. Okay. Uh, and these are going to be... Uh, well, we're going to have really two categories of goods that are uh, non-excludable rivalrous. So we have first things like a water fountain in public, right? So it's non-excludable because anybody can walk up and use it, even if they don't pay. And it's rivalrous because you drinking out of that water fountain does affect the ability of someone else to drink out of that water fountain, at least at the same time. Um, and then public bathrooms, right? Using that bathroom affects someone else's ability to use the bathroom, but anybody can walk in and use it. Um, public, crowded public beach, right? So it's crowded, so it feels riv rivalrous, rivalrous, right? You spreading out your blanket affects someone else's ability to spread out their blanket. Um, but it's not excludable, right? Anybody can come to the public beach and, and hang out. Um, or a highway, right? Not excludable. Anybody can drive on the highway, but it gets crowded with traffic, so it feels like your, your being there affects other people's ability to do what they want to do on the highway. So we call those congestible public goods. So congestible describing like that they're busy and so they feel rivalrous, even though um, they, like if they weren't busy that they would maybe feel not as rivalrous, but because anybody can access them, they, they tend to get crowded. All right, but then we also have things here like a fish in the ocean. So if someone catches a fish in the ocean, then no one else can catch that fish. So it's rivalrous, uh, but anybody can go out in the ocean and catch a fish. Uh, and so things like fishing permits and um, uh, hunting licenses or those sorts of restrictions are an attempt to put a property right and make excludable what would otherwise be non-excludable. Okay, And that helps solve some of the problems that you would see with this, right? Because this is going to be subject to the tragedy of the commons that we talked about, like with the, the whiteboards in our classroom getting uh, not being well taken care of. And so... Um, trying to put a property right onto them so that they, they feel excludable and not non-excludable is going to help solve some of the problems with overfishing. Um, okay, but then also like water in a river, right? Um, if anyone can divert the water from that river, like if a farmer wants to take some of that water from the river to water their crops, 
then people downstream can't use that water for other things. So it's, it's rivalrous. Uh, but if there's nothing stopping the farmer from diverting the water, then it's not excludable. But that's going to be a huge problem, right? Because people downriver would like to use that water and if it's being diverted, then they can't. So again, water use rights, uh, and there's a complicated system in the Western United States of establishing property rights to water to make it excludable, to prevent this problem of people can just essentially steal water from people downstream. Okay, so those are our common pool resources, we call those. CPR or common pool resources. Okay, so then we have uh, the last category, which is our non-rivalrous, non-excludable goods. And this is what we've been building to, because these are our pure public goods, okay, which is going to be our market failure. And we'll talk in a minute why we uh, why these are going to be a market failure. But the pure public goods um, are goods where people can use the good without paying and one person's use doesn't affect another person's use. So it turns out this is going to be really, really important because uh, it's going to be difficult to get people to pay for it. So it's hard to see how we're going to provide all these goods because people can use it without paying. But once we get them provided, we would love for people to use them because they're non-rivalrous, right? So once we get a firework show provided or Wikipedia provided or national defense, we want people to, to make use of those things, right? We want people to use come look at the fireworks. We want people to, you know, use sites like Wikipedia. But it is going to be a challenge to provide them in the first place because people can use them without paying. Okay, but we'll talk more about that. But yeah, so fireworks, right? So a firework show, people can come and watch the firework show and not affect the other people's ability to look at the firework show, right? Um, and fireworks are profoundly non-rivalrous, right? Because there are cases where a good might feel non-rivalrous if it's not crowded, but for a fireworks show, right? Like if you're having trouble seeing the fireworks, just walk a little bit to a different area and you'll be able to see the fireworks super well. So uh, for people for miles around. So profoundly non-rivalrous, the fireworks show. Um, and then non-excludable, right? So you can't blindfold everybody who didn't pay for the fireworks show, right? People miles around can enjoy it. Okay, um, right? And then Wikipedia, right? So Wikipedia could put a paywall where they say you have to pay money in order to see Wikipedia. That's what um, some websites do, like news sites. Um, but they choose not to. So they choose to make it non-excludable. So anybody can look at Wikipedia. Um, sure, you have to own a computer to look at Wikipedia. But if you think about it, Wikipedia doesn't make any money from you looking at Wikipedia. Okay? So that's the problem. Okay? But it's not clear, like, how, how do they get money to support Wikipedia? Because people don't have to pay to use it. So that's the problem. Uh, but you looking at something on Wikipedia doesn't kick off someone else who was looking at something on Wikipedia. Lots of people can look at it at the same time, which is awesome. Okay. Um, and then national defense is also an iconic example of a pure public good because the um, it's non-rivalrous in that you being protected by you know, U.S. government actions to keep to try to keep Americans safe uh, doesn't make anyone else less protected. Everyone is protected by those actions. Okay. Um, and it's also non-excludable, right? So even if you don't pay your taxes, right, the government can't just like peel away the protection from your house so that only your house could get attacked by terrorists, right? But everybody else is still protected. They can't do that, right? Their actions protect everyone more or less equally. Um, and then, right, things like a radio station. So a radio station broadcasts, right? And anyone with a radio can pick it up and they don't pay the radio station, right? Uh, but it's not rivalrous, right? So lots of people can turn on their radios and listen at the same time and it's great. Okay. Um, and then a lighthouse sends messages to boats passing by that helps them, you know, avoid dangers or whatever. Um, but even if the boats, like, there's no way for the boats to pay directly for the use of the lights from the lighthouse, right? Um, and it's it's non-rivalrous, right? One boat's using the signals from the lighthouse doesn't affect another boat's ability to use those signals. Okay, so those are the examples in the four categories of goods. Okay. 